Coming to you live from Angkasapuri, you're watching Updates at Noon with me, Aslani. Our top stories today, man surrenders after slashing his dad a mom. A woman was killed after she was slashed in the neck by her stepson in an incident in Kampung Batu Machang near Jerek, Kuala Musang yesterday evening. Kuala Musang Police Chief Superintendent Sik Chun Fu said the police found out about the incident after the suspect, a 39-year-old man, turned up at the Bratam Police Station at 4.45pm. The man told the police that he had killed his 54-year-old stepmother with a machete. Superintendent Sik said that the incident was believed to have taken place at 4 p.m. and preliminary investigation found that the suspect was a drug addict who was also experiencing a mental problem. He said only the suspect and the victim were in the house during the incident. A police investigation at the scene found the weapon used and the victim had died after her neck was severed after being slashed. He said the body of the victim had been sent to Gomusang Hospital for a post-mortem and the case was being investigated under Section 302 of the Penal Code. In an effort to adapt the Kroger Malaysia spirit, civil servants must provide their most efficient and best services to ensure the government's aspirations can be achieved. According to Public Service Department JPA Director General Dato Sri Muhammad Shafiq Abdullah, the roles of each civil servants have direct and significant impacts towards the country's economic growth. Malaysia pernah menjadi negara perdagangan ke-16 terbesar di dunia. Namun rekod terkini pada tahun 2020 menunjukkan Malaysia telah turun kedudukan nombor 24. Jika kita tidak melakukan sebarang perubahan, daya saing negara akan terus menurun. Jadi perkhidmatan awam mempunyai peranan utama dalam menjajar semula penyampaian, sistem penyampaian serta hala tuju melalui dasar-dasar yang fasilitatif untuk meningkatkan penyertaan penglibatan sektor swasta bagi menambah baik KDNK negara. He said this during a special address to the civil servants in Putrajaya. This is his first address after being appointed as the Director General of the Department. The supplementary electoral rolls for January 2022 is open for review for 30 days until 17th March after being certified and gazetted yesterday. Election Commission EC Secretary Dr. Ikmaruddin Ishaq said it contains the names of 36,408 Malaysian citizens aged 18 years and above from 1st January to 31st 2022 who are automatically registered as new voters. The rolls also contain 8,579 registered voters who changed constituencies and 7,164 individuals who changed their voter status or category in the period from 1st to 31st January. As such, he called on citizens aged 18 and above until 31st January and any registered voters who applied for a change in voting constituency or status to check their names in the supplementary electoral rolls. Dato Ikmaruddin Esa said the EC had prepared a four matters of review for the electoral rolls, namely the EC portal, my SPR SEMA mobile application, the official portal of the state election offices, and the EC hotline at 03-8892-7018. Malaysia has expressed hope to co-chair the second joint Malaysia-Russia Commission for Economic, Scientific, Technical and Culture Cooperation, JCESTC, with Russia. Senior Minister of International Trade and Industry, Dato Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali, said the commission aims to boost partnership in several areas. In a series of tweets after receiving a courtesy call from Russian Ambassador to Malaysia, Nail Latipov, the senior minister said this will be a boost to both countries' partnership, particularly in aerospace, pharmaceutical and medical equipment, shipbuilding, chemical, 
and power engineering, thus further contributing to the growth trajectory in our bilateral trade ties. The first session of JCESTC was held between Malaysia and Russia in Moscow on 1st to 2nd October 2019, with both countries discussing cooperation, particularly in the areas of aerospace, defense, information and communications technology, innovations and digital development. Dato Sri Azmin also tweeted that he had a most engaging session with Latipov during his courtesy call, where both of them discussed a wide range of collaboration on how to further strengthen economic ties and bilateral linkages. He said both countries had expressed optimism on the tremendous opportunities that were presented to them through JCESTC and the Working Group on Economic Cooperation in Industry and Trade led by the Ministry of International Trade and Industry, METI. National Under-23 head coach Brad Maloney stressed that the Young Tigers are ready to display their best performance when facing Laos tomorrow. He said the squad are eager to begin their match in the Under-23 AFF tournament following the withdrawal of Indonesia and Myanmar after both squads were plagued with COVID-19 outbreak. Team performance is paramount, as I say. Um, the, the players have really... Uh, bought into our playing style philosophy and what we've worked on on the training pitch. So uh, if we can display that on match day against Laos, then, then I'll be satisfied. Meanwhile, the FAM in a statement has confirmed that Selangor FC 2 winger Muhammad Fahmi Daniel Muhammad Zaim is set to play in the AFF Under-23 Championship in Phnom Penh, Cambodia after all. The read that Fahmi has been confirmed as the replacement for defender Ahmad Zikri Muhammad Khalili, who has been ruled out with a knee injury. FAM said the last-minute replacement was done before the national squad submitted their final team list for the AFF for registration on Sunday. According to the latest SOP issued by the AFF, Fahmi Daniel and another player, Shafi Aswad Sapari, are required to undergo a five-day quarantine before they will be allowed to rejoin their team for training. Earlier, Shafi Aswad joined the team at the last minute as a replacement for Fahmi Daniel, who tested positive for COVID-19 upon arrival in Phnom Penh last Friday. The proposal to build a new stadium for Kedah Darul Aman, KDAFC, in Sungai Petani will not involve state funds. Kedah Football Association President Datuk Sri Muhammad Sanusi Matno said the funds for the development of the project would be provided by KDAFC, while the state government through the Sungai Petani Municipal Council and PSPK would provide the land. According to Dato Sri Sanusi, the MPSPK and the state government required a piece of land in Sungai Petani to build a stadium several years ago, but it was abandoned for a while due to lack of budget. Tanah MPSPK punya, dana untuk pembinaan daripada KDFC. KDFC ni dia adalah cara-cara dia untuk uh, buat fundraising bagi pembinaan, pembinaan stadium. Mereka pun dah pergi tengoklah stadium JDT. Kualitinya dekat-dekat lah kan, oh. walaupun tak sampai antara tu. Jadi saya, mereka kata kami telah uh, buat keputusan untuk adakan JV dan saya akan bawa perkara ini untuk kelulusan uh, pihak Majlis Masyarakat Kerajaan Negeri. Bila dah mereka tu begitu serius, uh, kita akan bincanglah perkara tu. Bukanlah pakai duit Kerajaan Negeri nak buat KDFC dan partner dia. Datuk Sri Sanusi, who is also the State Menteri Besar, said the KDAFC had already completed the design of the stadium, which would include a training centre and an open field for public use. Apart from that, he said the selection of Sungai Petani for the construction of the stadium was also seen as appropriate, given its strategic position in the centre of Kedah. That concludes updates at noon. A reminder of our top story, man surrenders after slashing stepmom. Tune in to News at 10, coming up at 10pm on My Free Views, Saloran Brita RTM. Till then, I'm Azlani Adani. Thank you for watching. Goodbye for now.